Hey there, this is Ann Westerheim from Ikaru, and I want to thank everybody for joining us for today's webinar. I'm hoping to get a sound check from just a moment from Nancy, um, but today we're going to be talking about cybersecurity and why you need to, cha to train your employees. All right, uh, hopefully, um, let's just give folks another um, you know, 30 seconds or so to get on the same page here. All right, if you just joined us, uh, today's webinar is on cybersecurity and why it's really important to train your employees. So just a little bit of background on Ikaru, um, uh, in case somebody on the line is new. Uh, we were founded in 2001, we're full service IT. Our mission from day one has been to provide enterprise IT support to small businesses and everything ranging from CIO level strategy down to every day to day, um, can't print, can't scan, that kind of thing. And we've worked with hundreds of businesses and actually thousands of end users at this point. The mission of our workshops is to help you get more from the technology you have and introduce you to new technologies you need to know about. And for call clarity, this is a listen-only call. I'd, I'd love it to be more interactive, but if somebody needs to put a call on hold or you know, work is happening at this time, uh, it is on just a listen-only call, uh, but we will follow up with any questions. And if, if you're having trouble um, with getting any of the slides or anything, uh, call our office, 978-692-4200 and uh, Nancy and Tony are on standby. All right, so security, uh, the stakes are getting higher. You probably can't open a newspaper these days, go online, there's alerts all the time. Wanna cry a year ago, uh, that ransomware attack mostly hit in Europe and the UK, uh, but that actually put lives at risk. Uh, and the headlines, they just don't stop and they're getting worse, but Equifax, uh, ho hospital and uh, a lot of hospitals have been attacked. One in California, $17,000 ransomware payment, B billions lost in email scams to small businesses, uh, Yahoo's been breached, Equifax, Target. So on the one hand, we have a lot more awareness of cybersecurity. I think everybody knows what it is at this point. Uh, but to some degree, I think that people maybe get a little numb to it, that, okay, it, it, it's in the background, it's always happening, but it really does relate to everyone. And I wanna show you this headline, and this just happened um, within the past week. The school district right here in Massachusetts, Lemonster, not too far away, wound up paying $10,000 in ransom after they, their school district got attacked with ransomware. And the police chief said, it, they didn't even file a report, they're not even investigating, because the police chief stated that it was impossible to solve this crime. These attacks occur from overseas, they're automated, I'm gonna get a little more into that in a moment. Um, you know, but this is a really bad situation and it is everywhere. The big companies, Target, Yahoo, they make the headlines, they make the international news. But one thing that's really important to know is that these threats are everywhere. And in fact, one thing to think about is every virus ever distributed is still out there. So it just keeps growing and growing. There's uh, part of the reason behind this is there's a lot of money available. And with the rise of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, now the bad actors can hide behind these anonymous paying, payment schemes. But if, if you look on the black market and if you go on the dark web, folks buy and sell, they're buying and selling your credit card information. That's why probably all of you have gotten a letter from a credit card company in the past year uh, that here's your new card. Uh, it happens quite frequently, iTunes accounts. So basically everything is for sale on the dark web and there's a lot of money and that attracts a lot of criminals. And it's not this person. It's a lot of people have this idea, oh, there's this genius hacker um, it is working from his mother's basement and targeting these people. It's not like that at all. A, a lot of small businesses think I'm not a target. Nobody, you know, I'm so small, nobody's out to get me. In fact, the threats are all automated. And this is an example, this is pulled off the dark web, but this is an example. This is a marketing email to bad actors saying there is an overstock. So people can just, with no, very little to no technical knowledge at all, can go on the dark web and just buy these installers and set themselves up for business. And just like there's cloud-based 
um, productivity uh, software that you may use, like Salesforce, QuickBooks Online, et cetera, these bad actors have their software that they sell the same way and they go into business and uh, uh, it, it's just out there. This is translated from Russian. Uh, it, it's just one example taken from Krebs, the Krebs on Security blog. There's also things that are totally outside of your control. Um, if, if I used to build microprocessors, that's that's what I did earlier in my career. And if you actually understand how chips are made and how computers run, it's actually a miracle that any computer ever works. And there's you know, thousands of lines of code and, and, and the software, the hardware is really complex. And on a routine basis, vulnerabilities are found and these are patched. Uh, but there's really no way around this. It's not like Microsoft is making bad products. It's the stuff is so complex and a vulnerability is found. Uh, there's what's known as white hat hackers. They'll uh, notify the company of a vulnerability. Typically it's resolved and then it's announced to the outside world. One of our really important messages, and we've been on a mission for years and years about security patches, protecting small business, we see that small businesses are often overlooked. As we mentioned, not not in the headlines, but about half of the cyber attacks target small business. And if you stop and think about it, uh, they're they're vast. They're mostly just automated automated um, attacks. And only 14% of small businesses rate their ability to mitigate cyber risks as highly effective. So you have half the threats hitting small business. You're just not seeing them in the headlines and only a small percent of small businesses that actually feel like, okay, they got this under control, they have their security under control. And about half are just caused by human errors, or, um, and, and very few are caused by uh, system failure itself. So getting into to the topic of, of today, and I'm gonna cover a lot of material, um, but I know people need to get back to work, so we're trying to keep this to within the 30 minute time slot. Uh, PII, is personally identifiable information. And that's typically first name or first initial plus a last name and some identifying information. This is how it's defined in the mass data security law, all HIPAA, other industry specific regulations, basically anything off of the NIST framework is effectively the same. So all of these um, all of these regulations, these, these are laws. So you want to secure your business. You want to, the, when a ransomware attack hits, it basically shuts down everything. So businesses can't work. There's the Mass Transit Authority in San Francisco was shut down over Thanksgiving weekend a year ago because they got hit by ransomware and had to, they, they basically just opened up all the turnstiles and let everybody travel for free, it cost them millions of dollars, but at least they could let people ride the trains, but they couldn't collect any fares during that time. So you definitely want to protect your business from a, a productivity point of, view, point of view. There's also reputation. Um, you don't want to be uh, you don't want to be the person who makes the news or have to tell your customers you have you know you can't function or you can't take calls can't operate because of of something that's going on and uh, but another really important thing to remember and sometimes folks forget this it actually is the law the mass data security law which affects every business in Massachusetts went into effect in 2010 so it's been around for many years you are legally required to follow uh, these standards. They're good business practices and they're gonna protect your business, but they actually are required by law. So um, when we talk about security, if you've been on any of our other training, we think about it as layers of security. There is no such thing as 100% security. You might hear ads on the radio, if you get this software, it's gonna protect everything. That's, it's not true. You need layers of security. And it, one way to think about it, it's like bulletproof glass. It's, it's, it's those layers together that actually will stop the bullet. So looking at the scope here, when you think about cybersecurity and come up with the uh, approach for your business, a couple of different areas to look at. Um, there's technology, you know, security patches. I think we've bored everybody with talking about security patches for years and years and years, but that's really a fundamental uh, foundation of your security plan. They, and I'm gonna show they are required by law. Uh, but when you look at that WannaCry attack that mostly hit the, the whole UK hospital system where surgeries had to be rescheduled, 
ambulances were turned away from the hospitals, the blood supplies in some cases were destroyed. It really put lives at risk. Something like 18% of their systems were running Windows XP, which hasn't been patched by Microsoft for years. It's, it's, it's just way out of date. And you look at that and you think, wow, all of this damage, there's bad actors, but also, you know, why were these systems out there in mission critical functions that weren't up to date in terms of their security? So there's technology, there's processes, and a really important thing about in the focus of today is people and the role of, of your employees, you and your employees in maintaining your security. So just to go through a couple of the guidelines, uh, this is uh, the text in green is a direct quote from the Mass Data Security Law. Um, you're required by law to have secure user authentication protocol. So basically that's passwords. Uh, people need to have unique passwords. Uh, if, you, if you look in here, um, you need to have a, a reasonable way of controlling the passwords. They have to be stored in a secure way. Uh, restricting access to active users and active user accounts only. Blocking uh, after multiple attempts where that's technologically feasible. Uh, use of strong passwords. I always like to review this because a lot of times passwords are the weakest link. Uh, the Houston Water Department was hacked a couple years back by a person who just was actually not trying to do harm. He just was curious and figured, oh, I wonder if I can get into the system, and found that he could get into the controller of basically the whole network using a three-letter password that they didn't publish, but you can guess it's, it's basically one of two passwords, but um, you know, he just got in like that. So here's you know a vital infrastructure for a large community where somebody didn't even reset the default password. So this is the kind of thing that can happen. So it's, it's worth repeating. Strong passwords are critically important. Changing the passwords regularly. We talk about every 90 days. Don't share passwords. There's new NIST guidelines about passwords that talk about you change them at, at, at certain events. So if you ever have, you know, say, a virus or something that goes on, then you go through and you change all your passwords as opposed to doing them on a regular timeline. Uh, but if you haven't changed your password in a long time, it's time. All right, and one of the things that happens when there is a, a, an actual breach, uh, one of the interesting things that they'll publish the most popular passwords. This is from one breach uh, from, I don't even remember which site a couple of years back, and they published the most popular passwords. Basically, if you see any of your passwords on this list, change change it today. Uh, these are the most these are the most popular passwords in the world. Don't use them. Another thing to think about again, if there again, there's no such thing as 100% protection. You may have an incident occur at your site. You want to make sure you're following definitely following the law. Uh, you don't want to be this person. So if you remember, there was a um, really horrible situation a couple months back where there was a false missile alert in Hawaii, where basically an emergency broadcast went out to everybody saying there's incoming missiles. And it was really scary. There were folks hiding, trying to hide their kids under manhole covers. And, um, you know, people went into a panic. It turned out to be a false alarm. So after an event like this, they go and kind of investigate everything. And this is something that came out. This, this password was not why they had that fault occur. But when they go in and look at everything, you don't want to be this person where this was in an AP article a couple of months before this incident occurred, and there's a password prom in, in the photo. It's a password on a monitor, and it happens to be in this photo. And that's the kind of thing you just don't want. That's not the press that you want. Okay, uh, computer security updates, micro Microsoft, Java, Adobe. Uh, for files containing personal information on a system that's connected to the internet, there has to be a reasonably up-to-date firewall protection and security patches. Again, the stuff, the text that's in green is a direct quote from the Mass Data Security Law. So a reminder that it's not just a good idea, it's not just to protect you, it is the law. Security layers, uh, antivirus, anti-malware, uh, reasonably up-to-date uh, virus, um, antivirus software as well. Encryption, just as, as a reminder to folks, uh, any uh, communicated documents, anything that contains personal information has to be transmitted in an encrypted fashion. Password protection is not the same as encryption. This is kind of, this is probably like the number one question that we get. So if you have a, 
a laptop and you just have a Windows password on it, basically anyone can take out that hard drive, put it in another system and see what's on that hard drive. The Windows password doesn't do much for you. It's, it's encryption that you need to have. And that's basically, it basically scrambles all your information so no one else can read it. Uh, email, uh, protected information should never be sent via standard email. Um, sending email is kind of like a postcard. It, it's The text can be seen along the way. All right, so covering all these different layers, we kind of blasted through the framework of, I um, hope it made the case that security is an issue for everyone, not just the big companies, not the names that you read in the headlines. Half of these attacks are hitting small business. You need all these layers of security in place. They're going to protect your business. They're also required by law. And user training is actually also specifically required by law. Now, obviously, you want you want your employees trained for a lot of different uh, in a lot of different aspects of your business, et cetera. Uh, but this it, again, the text in green is a direct quote from the Mass Data Security Law. So education and training of employees on the proper use of computer security systems is is requ this is required by law. My screen's a little blocked here. And an IBM study found that 95% of breaches are caused by employee mistakes. So now if we get into this, let's go back to that, um, the ransomware attack that just occurred in the Lemonster School District. The police chief said the crime is unsolvable and they basically aren't even investigated. They paid the ransom, which is problematic. You're paying criminals at that point, but that, that was their only recourse. Uh, what we can... Um, surmise from all of this is they didn't have a backup. They didn't have a disaster recovery plan. And I would guess, and I don't even know if they're doing any forensic analysis, uh, that it was most likely caused by an email, a phishing email that went into the, the organization, because that's one of the most common attack vectors. So that's one of the reasons we've rolled out the security training platform. And for those uh, of you, this is a simple way to make sure you can prove that your employees are being trained. Now, we do a lot of work in our community. We do, we've do we done training um, to uh, the, the town government, uh, senior centers. We go around and we do training. We do training on site. We do webinars like this. This is basically a platform that you can get to make sure everybody in your organization is trained and that you're compliant to that uh, requirement to train your employees. And I just want to um, show now show you what the portal looks like uh, for a few minutes because we get a lot of questions about this, like why would you want to do this? Um, this is what the security portal dashboard looks like. There's policies and procedures, uh, contracts and documents, and there's an education center, and that's a really important component of this, and security risk assessment. About 50% of users will fall victim to a zero day phishing attack in a year. It's, it's, there's so many of them, they're so clever. And uh, really uh, one of the best methods to build awareness for this is to actually run phishing tests to your employees. Because everybody thinks, oh, you know, I'm, I'm up to date with the news, I understand this. I, you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna be the one to click. But whenever we run tests for clients, there's always someone who clicks. And the reason is these are socially engineered emails that are designed to trick you into opening them. And the kind of, there's usually a sense of urgency. Um, it's something that you think you need. They, they word them in a way that there's a sense of urgency. Or sometimes it's um, like clickbait. It's something like a payroll report or something that, you, that uh, somebody might be enticed to open, thinking, oh, wow, I've got this financial report. Um, nobody knows I have it. I'm going to open, open it. So um, this is an example of phishing tests that you can run to employees. So one, is, there, there's a long laundry list of these. They're rated in difficulty. There's different types. Some are maybe going to be more or less obvious to your population, but there's one for a tax refund. I just showed three random ones. Another one, there's a low account balance. So you can imagine like all of a sudden you get an email from your bank that says your balance is low and you think, oh, you know, what happened? Somebody got into my account 
and without even really thinking, you click and open it, or a Google account password change. And this is what this is what one of the emails looks like. Um, this this is a tax refund. So they're all things. When, when you look at these, they're designed um, and they they mirror what's out there in the real world. They're they're designed to get you to click. They're not going to work for everybody because you might get an email from a bank that you don't even do business with and you know it's a fake. But you know. If they send one out from every bank, at one point they're going to hit the one that you work with. Um, the other thing is this micro training. So we send out um, short training videos every week, and this is a sample of what some of them are about appropriate electronic disposal. Again, you never want to throw out a hard drive. Don't delete data, it's not really gone. Uh, password tips. And this is sort of just to get the, these ideas in front of your population on a weekly basis and if they look at them they're like one to two minutes long and it just sort of keeps reinforcing this idea that you know uh, you know staying safe on LinkedIn um, deleting data off our old smartphones uh, tax season scams we're kind of past tax season right now but there's a ton of them that come out during tax season and these are all short people get them in their inbox and once a month there's a newsletter that and, and this is just like one little sample, but they talk about different uh, security incidents. Um, one of them on here is about a USB drive. Um, the, all kinds of studies have been done on this, but if if USB drives are, you know, somebody finds one in the parking lot and it says financial data, it's like, oh, I'm, I, I want to see what's on this. They're usually created to entice people to open them, and, and they do get open. People think they never open them. Um, the other thing is an annual exam, so you can actually prove that your employees have been trained. Again, if you think if you think about all the different layers of security, and uh, we some, we've started to see um, we've done network penetration tests for clients that have been required to do it for bank loans, et cetera. So more and more, we're seeing people being asked for this. Large customers asking suppliers uh, to prove. That they have a security policy in place. So this is this is a way you can prove it. A raise you know raise the awareness and the education. Of course, that's the primary goal. But also you have a way of proving that it's done. Um, this is an example. As you look at the security training, this is from our demo account. But uh, this is the training completion. So you can see that everybody in your organization has completed the training. Um, you have the ability to print the certificate if you want. Um, and the other thing that's included is some boilerplate policies and procedures so you don't have to reinvent the wheel, like the written information security policy. There's, that's something your, every business in Massachusetts has to have on file. So you, you get the Word doc from here, customize it to your business, and then it's done. So it's not this insurmountable task to dream up uh, what the policy needs to be. Um, security incident response, uh, network security, termination policy, et cetera. That's key for preventing access to systems after somebody leaves an organization. And then the other thing is a, um, a security risk, risk assessment process that you can actually run on your own. It walks you through kind of step by step doing this. This is something you could run, keep on file, and have it all there. So we, we just want people to be aware that this exists. Um, you know, we've been talking about the mass data security law for, for many years. Uh, we think this is a good cost-effective way of just making sure you, you meet the check marks on it. And with that, I just want to quickly, I'm going to just show the portal live if I can for a minute. So this is um, inside the portal. I just want to show you in the Education Center. Hopefully you can still see my screen. Um, this is a list of the micro-training that I sent. This, this shows a historical record. So in our demo account, that goes to our users internally. Um, so you see password tips. Uh, you know what is a socially engineered attack? If you're very tech savvy, you've probably read a lot about this on your own. Uh, but really, the weakest link. It, it, back to that Lemonster case. If one person clicked on the phishing email that con contained the ransomware, that's it. You've just infected the whole network. Uh, so we were in the education center. Um, oh, the other thing I want to show in here is under security training, uh, training reports. You can see uh, who's passed the test, et cetera. 
If we go back to the dashboard um, under policies and procedures, you can see what some of the documents are. So there's a whole bunch of them in here. So you basically just get a library of it. But these are all things that you do need to think about in your business. They're real. And um, A, protect your business. And B, be able to sh show that you're being compliant. Okay. And I'm just going to get back into the slideshow. All right, so that's um, just kind of a taste of what's in the system. You can upload existing policies. I think that was kind of the highlights that I wanted to show. But you'd be amazed, like some of the tips are, like a laptop's less likely to be stolen if it has a sticker on it. And that's something you probably wouldn't even think of. But if you think about all the laptops at the airport, they all look alike. You put a sticker on it, they are. it is less likely to be stolen because it's so... It doesn't look like every other laptop after that. So little things like that that just kind of increase the awareness of all your employees are important. Um, for folks who are interested, it, it's not a fit for everybody. We think it's a cost-effective way of getting that compliance. But if you do sign up, we will give one month free. So you can just use that code. If you go to Acara.com training, uh, use that. you can use that code to get a month free if you're interested. All right, and to summarize, and I know everybody's got to get back to work. We're right in the middle of a busy work day. Um, when you think about security and your security plan, there's a lot of technology places, technology in place. If you're on a managed service program with us, you're getting, um, you see a monthly report, it's patches, antivirus, and stuff like that. So there's technology in place. We recommend a business class firewall for all businesses. That's SonicWall is our recommendation on there. There's the the level of protection you get on that versus the generic thing that you get at you know from Comcast or Verizon the difference is huge and it it's not it's not a, a giant amount of money and it it's a huge amount of protection in comparison real time analysis of data etc um processes uh w what are your procedures in place like what's your termination policy how do you make sure ex employees can't get access to stuff how do you make sure users only users who have access to PII or protected information only have access if that's re if they need that access to perform their job, your processes. And then most important and most often overlooked is the people. These days, the bad actors know that everybody is aware of ant you know, having antivirus software, having security patches. Um, if, 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 if you know, if you're on our best practices, you've got DNS protection, you got that business class firewall for the perimeter security. You have so many different layers of protection in place. And now the bad actors know that. So they're sending out the phishing emails because they get the one person to click and take down the whole network. So remember your people in this process. Okay, and with that, uh, we're going to wrap up. We're at the half hour mark. Uh, hopefully you got a lot out of this today. We have a blog. Uh, we really want to hear from you if you think there's topics that you want to learn about because we're always looking for ideas from our blog. Uh, we just did one uh, yesterday about the Lemonster ransomware attack, um, but please, if you have questions, it means other people have the same question. We'd love to put those in a blog. Uh, we're And we're active on social media. So however you like to get your information, we're on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, and we have the blog. Really want to hear from you, want to connect with you. And I really believe that cybersecurity, th this is a public safety issue, and it really is up to everybody. We're all in this together. You're protecting your business and your clients and your employees, and you want to be sure that the other folks that you do business with, your bank, et cetera, is also protecting your information. So um, we're, we're, we just want to get the word out there, and um, you know, please connect with us on social media. And with that, I want to thank everyone for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. And if you, if you think of any questions, uh, just email us. My email's right there. Email Nancy. Give us a call. Uh, we really want to hear from you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us.